Hi, this is Scott here. Um, I want to talk about a new feature that I added in XLights 2022.2. If you've seen this video that Keith has done, he had the ability to use this external app called XL Do to run commands from the command line. And you can basically write batch scripts to then call this app and run these commands. I started playing with this and some things that were kind of limitations of it for me at least was it's a separate app which I wasn't a huge fan of but also it's hard to run multiple commands and have uh, things like loops and if statements and have kind of like this logic if you run a command do something else so kind of the thing I did to get around that is in the newest version of xlates now I added this scripting dialogue and it allows you to run scripts right from X lights and these scripts can be uh, Lua based scripts. So Lua is a programming language. It's was designed to be embedded. So there's this Lua interpreter that I added to X lights and you run these Lua files, they'll run the Lua interpreter and X lights will run the Lua scripts, do whatever you write in the Lua script. And Lua supports multiple things. And kind of the, the specialness about embedding it is I used a, there's a Lua binding, it's called Sol3, but this allows Lua to wrap functions in XLites. So with this Lua binding, I basically you can have a script that you run that runs on the Lua runtime and it can call raw C++ functions in XLites. I, and you have to manually add the wrappers. So these are some kind of commands. So there's this file called Lua scripting that I added to the repo. So this is in GitHub. If you go under XLights uh, documentation, Lua scripting, and it explains some of the details about the Lua scripting implementation I added. The kind of the, the generic form of it is Lua has some basic types um, similar to C++. You have your Boolean string, number, um, table, and then you can also do like functions. Mostly what I use is you know, number, table, string. Table is kind of a unique to the scripting language. It's kind of like a 2D array. In most languages, you have single array, single dimensional arrays like list and, and vector. In Lua, that's represented as a table. And a table in Lua can be 2D or 1D. Um, and most of the uh, examples I'll show, it'll just be a 1D array. But kind of the important thing is I've added these commands. And so the first method I have is run command. This allows you to call these Excel do automation commands that Keith added. And how that kind of works is there's this documentation in the repo as well that has these Excel do commands, which basically is a command you run and it'll do something in XLites, a wrapper. I've added some more to kind of do some more advanced things that I was running into, but so let's kind of show some of this. So in XLites, now there's this tool run script and it'll pop up this dialog. Uh, when this dialog pops up, it'll load all the Lewis scripts that are in your install directory. So on like Windows, C program files, XLites, there's a folder in there called scripts. It'll load scripts from there. So that kind of means we can package uh, scripts with XLites and they'll automatically show up. But then it also runs scripts from your show folder. If you have a folder in your show folder called scripts, it'll load all of the files that end in Lua and it'll show them in this dialog. The dialog itself, you have the script, you can hit run or you can double click it and this will basically run the script with the Lua runtime. And it'll call, so your script, and with this dialog, you can just uh, right click open. So like if you right click view script, it'll open it in your uh, text editor of choice that's defaulted for Lua. So some of these commands we can go over, we have uh, Lua with the binding that I added. Um, we can wrap, we can send variables to X lights and we can also then wrap the functions like I was saying. So the only variable it sends right now is show folder. Uh, the functions though, we have a log, which this is kind of critic. This is kind of important because it'll log whatever message you put into that statement to the script dialog itself. 
if you look in the dialog here, there's kind of this uh, text box at the bottom. So if I run test, it'll actually log then whatever's in the script. So the script, if we looked at that test script, it just logs show folder. So in the binding, I'm sending in show folder as a, as a variable. In Lua, I'm just logging it. Where the power kind of comes with Lua is I can uh, kind of wrap different commands together and do logic and for statements. So the, the wrapper I kind of show here called run command that lets me run any of these XL do commands, which are all shown in this file. I added a command called get controller IP. So the run command, this will actually call the xlates C++ method that I wrote called run command. Um, if you look in the documentation, it says the parameters it needs. So we need a command. And then if the command needs parameters, uh, that'd be passed in as a table. And then it returns a table, which in this instance is normally just like a, a 2D array. And this return table from this run command, if we look in the documentation, it'll be the return values of the call. So all these Excel do commands, they return basically uh, it's a, a list of parameter and value. So Excel, when the script is run, the Lua interpreter will take the parameter and value and basically make a table of this. So the return will be uh, a map or a table of value parameter. By default right now, it just converts these all the string types in Lua. I'm trying to work on adding it so it actually convert it to the native types. So if it's like an int, it'll convert to int and string to string. Um, that wasn't working uh, when I was, I haven't got that working yet. So hopefully in a future version, I'll fix that. But um, what we can see here is in our script, we'll, uh, we'll get the controller IPs. And the reason for some of these other wrapper commands is if you look, Excel do when I do this get controller IPs or names, it returns a string that's just a comma separated list. In Lua, it's kind of hard to um, separate strings. Uh, I could have written some like Lua libraries and included them, but the easy thing I did was I just basically wrote other uh, C++ methods and added wrappers around them. So there are some methods that are just like join string and split string. Those are just kind of used as helper methods to help with some of these other commands. I also added some commands for like user selection. So if you have like a list or a table that you want the user to select one from. So if you run one of the commands like get controller or get models and it returns a list, you can have a pop-up that allows the user to select which one from the list. Um, there's one called prompt string, which just basically allows the user to enter text. So if you wanted them to enter a value, you can show a message, show like an error message. And kind of the more advanced one that I thought was the most interesting is I have this prompt sequences. Um, this is very custom. This is similar to like the batch render when it pops up and allows you to select the sequence. This will allow the script to use that same window pop up and ask the user to select what sequences they want to, to use in their, in their script. And then basically you could iterate through it and then do a command. I'll, I'll show that in a little bit here, a little bit more in depth. But a basic command here, uh, we'll just run it, gets the controller IP and kind of how I was showing in the Excel do, this will return a string list. And then we needed to split that with the split string command I added. As I kind of pointed out, everything is a table. So this comes back as a map of the values. So to get the value out of the table, we need to hit, we need to select the messages parameter. And that's what you see the return type, there's the return. And then normally there's a message. Some of them have different return types. But for this, we need to get the message out of it, split that, it'll make another table. That's all the controller IPs. And then this is basically how we do a for loop to iterate through all the controller IPs. Um, if you look in the Lua documentation, which I have a link to in the uh, in the debt manual. It explains some of these while loops, for loops, these more advanced structures, how you can do um, looping. 
And just for this looping, we're doing what's called an I pair. There's also just a regular pair. And that's how um, kind of the key values are mapped out of, a, uh, out of a table. So the first value will be the iteration value in the table. The second will actually be the value itself. So we're just going to log the value. So if I save this and go back to the run sequence, there is a clear button to clear this dialog. There's also refresh, which will re reload the scripts directory. So if you add new scripts, but I can just run test. And what it did is in my script, I got all the IPs and then just logged them to the screen. So and it's pretty basic there, but if you wanted to, in theory, do like an upload or do something like that, you could then put logic in here to call the command in the Excel do to upload do something, you know, upload FPP, upload anything like that. So that's kind of the basics. The more advanced things you can do with it is I know there's been some requests to do like batch, batch packeting sequences and batch video export. With this prompt um, sequence, method wrapper that I added. This allows the user to run this script and it'll ask them to select the sequences. And then using the for loop, we can then go through the sequences. There's a command to open sequence. We can do a render all, do a export video, and then close it. So when I run this script, the batch video export, I can hit run. The prompt for sequence is kind of slow is going through all your directories. But now it came up with the same dialog that the batch render has. It allows you to select whatever sequence you want. And I'll just do this sequence because it's very small and won't take long. And when I hit OK here, what it actually is doing in the script is it opened my sequence. You can see that it's kind of showing it in the progress dialog because I had some logging in there. But it opened the sequence. It, rendered all, which I don't have any logging for, it exported it, and then closed the sequence. So if we go to uh, my xlates directory here, we should now have a multicolor a video. So this is my video exported from xlates, just doing that command instead of having to go to tools, export video, this just did it automatically. And you could see, I just selected one sequence, but you could select all your sequences and this script would go through them and export them. Similar thing, there's a package sequence one I wrote where you can just do a command and the batch video export, this is actually in the installer. So if you install 2022.2, the script will be in there. When you open the, um, the scripting dialog, it should just work by default. Kind of the other things I was adding is late in the season last year, I wanted to add some new models to my show. And because I don't do much group sequencing, I wanted to just copy effects from a previous or another model and copy them onto my new model. Um, the only way to do that is to then you know open all the sequences, do model copy, model paste, render, save, and repeat. Well, when you have 20 sequences, that can be kind of tedious. So I added some commands to just clone the effects from one model and add it to another model. And similarly, I added a uh, like a pixel tune to sign. And I wanted to just quickly add an on effect to that tune to sign in all my sequences. And I was doing this Christmas Eve about an hour before the show. So I wanted a way to do this as fast as possible. At the time, I did it manually, opened every sequence, added an effect, rendered, saved. But after that, I kind of wanted a way that I could do this easily. So I kind of added these uh, clone effects and add effects commands. Um, the basics of the add effects is you just set the model you want to add it to, the type of effect, and then your color palette. There's also a settings property, but for the on effect, there really aren't any settings. You can also set start and end time. And this is all documented in the Excel do command file here. So if you see there's a command, you can set the target property, the effect, the settings, 
Like, so the settings are just raw strings, palette. You can set the layer. So if you want to do multiple layers, and then you can do start and end time. If you don't specify a layer, it just uses the top layer. If you don't do a start or end time, it just does the whole time of the sequence. This allows us, I'll kind of do a demo of it here. So I kind of showed the script a little bit, but basically on my star model, I'm just going to add an on effect. And the palette here is, is like hex color order. So this is R, G, and B. FF is 255. So this will just be, in theory, a blue on effect on my star when I run this script. So we can do this, go to my star, do on effect, let's just clear this, do add effect, just run it. And all it did was add a blue effect to my star, nothing. Um, but that gives you the capability, like if I wanted to just quickly add something to a model, I can make a script. And there's a script here called, that I created, it's called add effect all sequences. And I'm not going to run this one because I don't want to uh, slow down my computer. But this would basically do the dialogue we showed earlier, prompt sequences, open the sequence, add that effect. And then in theory, we could add like a save or a render all in this, um, into this script. And we could easily go through all our sequences, add an on effect to a star. If, and if you want to do like a tune to sign, you could basically make a script to turn on uh, to always add a uh, setting to your tune to sign to always put you know a text effect or something you can make a script to globally do that you don't have to remember to do it all the time the other thing with the with this is i added this clone effect which allows me so if i add a new model in the future and i just want to copy the effects that are on my star model to another model like my r2d2 i can just run this command and it'll clone all the effects on it it also supports submodels. I have the model name and the slash then allows us to say the submodel name. So when I run this, this clone effects, let's clear the previous one. We'll just run it. We'll get a little thing that said it was cloned. And if we double click my R2D2 here, it took the effects that were on my star, which is only this on effect, and it put them on the body of my R2D2. That's just another command I added to the Excel do. There's other commands, the export video render that we kind of did, patch, patch, package log, patch, package sequence. I didn't really show, but, and then there's all these other ones that Keith has added and maybe in the future, hopefully we'll add some more. Yeah, that's just all I wanted to show, a way that you can do Lua scripting now in Exploits. Um, I'll, I hope to add more features, more wrappers, kind of as things, people desire more things. Like I would really like a way to bulk update my master views and all my models, um, ways to maybe find settings and models that are incorrect, if we have incorrect file names, or maybe we want to batch change colors of models, things like that. So hopefully in the future, I'll add some more of that kind of stuff. But uh, this is just the start. So. Uh, if you have any questions, just you know, hit me up. I'm Scott Hansen on Facebook. I'm also in the main Zoom room quite often, so I can help you. Um, I know this feature is kind of advanced and probably won't be used by the most average users, but I think it'll give us some power for people that are pretty advanced or even people um, who do a lot of sequencing and just want a way to uh, quickly fix some things and you know, make your layout a little bit better. So uh, uh, yeah, thanks for watching.